So at the origin of the Louvre Lens, there was an, a sort of utopia, an intuition. Uh, there were those of both two men, uh, Jacques Chirac, president of French Republic, and uh, Jean-Jacques Ayagon, uh, Ministry of, uh, of Culture. Uh, they wanted to share the French national biggest collections with all citizens by opening some uh, branches of most important museums elsewhere than in Paris to create museums able to um, uh, bring masterpieces uh, and, and even museums closer to, to people. Two national museums had uh, volunteered uh, Centre Georges Pompidou, National uh, Modern Art Museum, and the Musée du Louvre. Uh, where to install this new Louvre? Uh, several cities, all of them in the north of France we are in, uh, applied, but only one did not have a museum. Only one had a land of uh, 20 hectares. Only one was the earth of an area devastated by mining disinstrialization. Um, in this city of Lens, driven by football culture, a local support committee was created. Uh, over 8,000 uh, local people signed the book of support, but uh, not only signatures, but um, real uh, letters, messages, uh, in which they said their conviction that art could change their lives. Let's remember that uh, uh, the, the place was really in a very difficult economic social situation and uh, these people were really um, touched by a lot of inequalities. Everybody thought they would like uh, policies to begin by a, a, a big sum of money for a new, a new industry or etc. but not for a museum. They said the opposite. We want museum, it can really change our lives. This was the starting point of citizen appropriation of the museum by the, by the community for its design to its programmation from its strategy and even up to its management. Making the museum by the people for the people. Uh, first of all, the museum, the museum has an uh, empathetic, gentle, benevolent architecture. It was designed by Sana, you know this name probably because they are going to build the uh, extension uh, and renovation of uh, the Fine Arts uh, Museum in, in Budapest, Japanese uh, agency of uh, architecture. The museum is uh, uh, anything but an impressive monument. It's horizontal. Uh, you really uh, can see it from far. Uh, it is uh, uh, low, articulated in five vast buildings uh, in frosted aluminum, which gives a poetic and lunar aspect. Uh, in a way, it disappears, uh, reflecting uh, the sky and the landscape. One of uh, the most remarkable aspects of the design of the museum is the maximal uh, use of the available space through the creation of a real park museum. And the museum is in the middle of, of, this, of this park. As such, visitors do not suddenly enter a museum, but approach it uh, gently uh, through an expanse of greenery. The park both draws attention to the history of the site, it was a minor, and encourages appropriation of the place. I'll show you. So you see very well the, the, the museum there. But only from the sky you see it. Modest architecture, you see frosted walls. And here we are inside uh, the museum. Everything is transparency. The idea was to try to uh, erase frontiers in a way. Um, and you see that in the whole, you, you have some bubbles 
um, who contain different uh, uh, functions here, uh, the, um, uh, the library of the exhibition, uh, which is to uh, a working place for students. They can, they, can, can, they can come whenever they went and uh, use computers, we lend them, etc. And you see over there too, a special bubble. It's a picnic one because the Louvre Lance not only has a restaurant and a cafe, but it's a place you can bring your food, you know, in the museums. We usually don't do that. Uh, this is one of the dimension of the welcome we, we use. The Louvre Lens was thought as a laboratory for the Louvre in Paris, a place where visitors' relationship with works of art is reinvented. The building is on a uh, human scale, on one level. The acoustics are silent. The pyramids are black slag heaps. You have seen them uh, on a photograph. The museum is uh, surrounded by greenery, making one with this park. In Lens too, the Galerie du Temps brings together uh, in a single space of uh, 3,000 uh, square meters what the Louvre offers in Paris itself in a differentiated and partitioned manner into rooms, wings, departments. You know that uh, in the museums we like to structure uh, the Louvre Lens has reopened completely the, the, the field. Um, so techniques, periods, uh, regions are, are mixed in, in, in this place. This Galerie du Temps is a semi-permanent exhibition of uh, uh, more than 200 uh, masterpieces from, from the rooms of the Louvre. They are not uh, pieces from the storage of the Louvre. It offers this sort of a unique outlook on, on, the, on the history of art. Um, the limits are those of the Louvre from the invention of writing in Mesopotamia uh, to the ind industrial revolution in the mid uh, um, 20th century. Um, just when coal uh, uh, began to be mined in Lens. What makes this gallery particularly original is its museography you see here. Uh, using the entire long gallery designed by Sana, the layout presents the work chronologically in a single space. Works are, are in every encyclopedic, uh, that are in every encyclopedic museum in the world uh, exhibited separately, uh, uh, here are plastered alongside one another and dialogue together, demonstrating in, in a way a multicultural and shared history of, of the art, history of the world. But this is too, you see here, like a, a crowd, in fact, a friendly one where you can uh, circulate uh, in and feel you have your place. We are nowadays trying to enlarge uh, this time gallery and um, uh, the, the lockdown was the occasion to, for us to, to experience a new, a new dialogue by offering to visitors uh, almost 20 works deposited by the Musée du Quai Branly. The Musée du Quai Branly is uh, uh, dedicated to African, Oceanian and American arts. So they are now uh, um, in, the, in the Galerie du Temps, Western and non-Western uh, cultures coexisting even more widely. At the same time, we open to contemporary art with Pascal Convert's um, artist, uh, Panoramic of the Bamiyan Cliff. A like yet different uh, is to, to, to imagine temporary exhibitions uh, like nowhere else uh, to open the museum to the inhabitants. Uh, the museum includes their own uh, history, their own culture in its uh, pro proposals. Uh, universal themes concerning everybody, for instance, in uh, 2018 uh, exhibition about love. Uh, unusual themes too in Fine Arts Museum. We organized an exhibition with the inhabitants uh, about the, the football club uh, local, what we called RC Louvre. It is the club is RC Lens. Um, in 2020, an exhibition about black color because the, there were uh, coal mines. Uh, so um, this was a black country. And uh, uh, of course, black is too a very important uh, color to understand art history until modern art. So you see, we open the doors uh, out from the Louvre itself. 
Uh, in um, 2024, we are preparing an exhibition about uh, underground worlds, uh, both uh, uh, paradise, uh, um, uh, mines, uh, grots, etc., uh, in links with the uh, with the um, environment and landscape we are in. Why do we do that? Um, these exhibitions show the, the link between uh, legitimate and non-legitimate culture, between cultivated culture and common culture, uh, between uh, the, the whole world and local uh, uh, ones. They aim uh, to, to, to show um, how much culture uh, is all about. I think it's very important in our museums. Uh, for them, we are, we've organized uh, since uh, um, five years uh, exhibitions test groups. So we work about our project with, with the people. Uh, there are some um, forms of consultations uh, with inhabitants and neighbors. You see, I don't even speak neither are of public, neither of users, because we work with the people even if they don't yet come uh, to, to the museum. Uh, so we, we built with them uh, the exhibition route, uh, the development of the written mediation project, multimedia or human, the programming of events, uh, even the communication plan, etc. The, these are also a, a, a full-fledged mediation operation, and the panel reacts to the projects presented, uh, and um, this within a, a schedule, allowing the recommendations made to be taken into account. So you understand that what we are doing is erasing borders of the museum, um, borders between interior and exterior borders between visible and invisible. Uh, we have two uh, visible and, uh, and uh, invisible storages. Um, uh, the museum speeches are co-written with audiences and will uh, um, uh, be going even further very soon. The different museums teams uh, work in a very open-ended way. Our programming our programming policy shows the, the porosity, or I would say rather the, the fluidity between popular culture and scholarly one. So the Galerie du Temps again on, on, on the slides and the um, ballet we organized with um, uh, Anne Teresa de Kersmaker, Flemish uh, famous choreographer. Um, but it was not a, a one shot, it was during three weeks uh, to imagine a sort of different way uh, to be uh, um, uh, an exhibition uh, in, in the museum. Uh, so during three weeks, every, every day, every afternoon, continuously, the dancers were among the, the masterpieces. Here they are. And the Baga uh, shoulder mask from the Musée du Quai Branly in, in, the, in the Time Gallery exhibitions. Uh, you see here Soleil Noir, uh, Black Sands I talked to you about. There is a, uh, a picture I like a lot. The supporters of football uh, have uh, even dreamed to have Mona Lisa at the Musée du Louvre Lens and they have shown that uh, this piece of fabrics um, measures uh, uh, 30 meters per, per 30 in the stadium concerts among the works of art. Another I like a lot, we work a lot with the sportive uh, uh, ground. So because of, of its genesis here, uh, my north uh, at the inauguration of, of, of the museum in uh, to, um, uh, 2012. Uh, th this genesis uh, 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 gives us a sort of uh, responsibility, which is political, symbolic, social, societal. Uh, following the, the example of the Tate in Liverpool, the Guggenheim in, in, in Bilbao, the Louvre Lens aims to play a part in local regeneration, helping to, modern, to modernize the region's image. Uh, indeed, uh, I must say that uh, uh, tomorrow, 
uh, today, excuse me, economic and social conditions remain difficult in the region, with, for example, a higher than average unemployment rate of uh, 15%. And even in the direct neighborhood of the museum, it can be uh, 40%. For me, a responsible museum is a useful one. The forms of solidarity and social actions of the Louvre-Lens are as multiple as the audiences are plural. There is no preconceived action that can be more effective than a co-constructed project, considering the needs of the audiences and partner. Our projects are always in, in motion. You know, I say in my staff that there is something which is completely forbidden if our, in our museum. It's to say when somebody comes uh, to us and, and says, I'd like to work with you, it's to say in a museum, we don't do that. Or in a museum, it's not possible. They, they mustn't say that. In fact, the, the, the Louvre-Lens approach is not very conventional as it goes beyond cultural action alone. It can go as far as making the museum available, useful to partners to help to reach their objectives. This change in the museum's posture is decisive. The sharing of knowledge, plastic practices and emotions sometimes leads to the transfer of professional skills. Perhaps just giving you uh, three or four examples. Uh, the, the, the first of uh, our inclusive social approach is a program of young, uh, for young um, unemployed persons um, that we led uh, with uh, the, um, uh, the local job center. Um, since uh, five years, um, the, the museum works with this uh, uh, office, which is like a British job center or American employment office. Uh, this is a program involved uh, uh, young people looking for their first job. And uh, through a process of developing digital and cultural skills, uh, we organize uh, internships and cycles. Um, a series of workshops led uh, the young people to construct a, a speech, even their uh, CV, through a digital form uh, on objects and uh, works of art to speak out to remove certain obstacles encountered in their job search by working on expression, self-confidence, brownness to pride through artistic supports self-esteem is, is renovated. Uh, posture in public are worked on with the professionals we, we are and with the prof professionals of the agency, um, but in the museum. Uh, at the end of the program, job dating sessions are organized at the Louvre Museum where young people are uh, much more uh, uh, at ease than when they arrive. And this program works. And uh, uh, when young people take this internship at, at the museum and not in different uh, workshops organized by the office, they have a 15% more chance of finding a first job. This is, this is uh, uh, to say how much museums can invent new uses. They are very uh, precious for uh, areas they cannot even imagine. And uh, from the beginning, more than uh, 250 uh, young people have been involved in this, in this program. And uh, this was uh, considered as a prototype and uh, um, we are we are um, in the in the process of uh, of uh, um, this this uh, prototype being rolled out uh, nationwide. The second exhibition is that we are preparing a participatory exhibition for our tenth anniversary um, next year, uh, and. Um, uh, to echo the experiences of lockdowns, it will uh, question um, the issue of uh, intima intimacy, private space, and the place occupied by the works of, of art. The curatorship itself of this exhibition uh, is entrusted to young people with educational difficulties. They will be, they are the curators of this exhibition. Uh, a third example, perhaps a sculpture in the park, the first, the unique one, it was a, a, a command uh, 
from a very poor inhabitants of, of, uh, of the neighborhood of the museum held by associations and foundations. And uh, um, they, they wanted uh, this sculpture uh, signed by uh, Francoise Petrovic. Um, uh, they wanted it to be in the park as a manifest against inequalities and, uh, and miseries. And of course we said yes. Uh, fourth example, the, the strategic plan of the museum in France, we call it a uh, um, scientific and cultural project of this uh, our business plan uh, in the museums. Uh, we went, I didn't want to write it myself, uh, uh, neither with all my staff, it, all my teams. It was not enough. So um, the conception of this project uh, during um, uh, one year and a half has uh, involved public, private partners, professionals, artists, of course, visitors, but to you understood inhabitants of the territory. And of course, every the entire team of, of the museum. And uh, the, the result is a museum um, project uh, a little different um, uh, with um, uh, this un unusual identity acting on social, societal, economic issues. Uh, the museum made in this project five major commitments to women and gender equality, to employment, to fight against poverty, to health, to fight against uh, illiteracy, and computer illiteracy and to ecology. And uh, you have uh, uh, four, four transversal groups of volunteers, employers uh, from the museum working on this uh, inclusion issues. And uh, in, the, in the future, I want to involve more and more uh, the people part of our governance, uh, especially through a, a users committee by uh, uh, involving them really to uh, uh, go on with defining uh, the museum strategic decisions. So which are the results? Uh, in nine years, uh, the Louvre Lens has largely achieved its uh, objectives by welcoming uh, nearly 5 million uh, uh, visitors. Uh, in, 19, in, 19, uh, uh, in 2019, uh, more than half a million of visitors came in the museum. You know, it's in a city which is uh, uh, 30,000 uh, inhabitants only. Uh, so it became the second uh, largest uh, in terms of frequentation uh, museum in, in, in France out from Paris. Uh, 400 jobs were created through the arrival of the museum directly or in, indirectly and uh, 20 uh, million uh, euros uh, economical impact on the territory each year. But uh, the more important uh, are not uh, these numbers. Uh, it is that we have been able, of course, it's not finished, to widen the path of a most, most democratic, more democratic museum. Uh, we welcome plural audiences, more representative of the diversity of the inhabitants. Um, Last year, the proportion of visitors who are uh, uh, employees or workers has doubled uh, during the crisis, uh, compared to be already noticeably a typical result known in the past. Um, uh, we have 68% uh, visitors unfamiliar with museums uh, versus 26 uh, on average in the French museums. Um, in conclusion, uh, I, I would say that uh, um, the, the potential of museums to create meaningful, meaningful experiences for audiences of all origins and backgrounds is at the heart of their social value. As agents of change and trusted institutions, there is no more significant time than ours for museums to generate relevance, constructively engaging with the political, social, cultural realities of modern society. The challenges of inclusion and diversity and the diff difficulty of dealing with complex social issues is increasingly polarized environments that are significant. 
A growing public expectation for social change has catalyzed a conversation about the potential of museums for social good in the form of exhibitions, lectures, performance, educational programs, and other initiatives. However, much remains to be done to overcome the conscious and subconscious power dynamics that can create gaps within museums and between museums and their visitors. We mustn't be frightened, but moving uh, toward the world. In the, it is the, the, the condition for museums to remain uh, or even to, to, to become at last real homes, not only for heritage, but for people. Thank you very much. <laughs>